In the Democratic Republic of Congo, Moïse Katumbe, one of the main opposition candidates for that country's December 20 presidential election, suspended part of his campaign on Wednesday after violent clashes at one of his election rallies. Reuters news agency reports that live rounds were fired and several people injured as Katumbe addressed supporters in the coastal town of Muanda. On Tuesday, reporter Al Katanti Sibiti Jaffa in Eastern DRC joins us with details. Moise Katumbi announced the suspension of his campaign in the south provinces of DRC, Western Kasai, Eastern Kasai, and Central Kasai. These provinces are where the President Chisekedi is originate. And this is because of what happened yesterday, 12th December in Moanda, a city in Western Congo, where when campaigning, talking to locals, Moise Katumbi was attacked by who are supposed to be members of Chisekedi political party. And when attacking these people, used stone on Moise Katumbi and other uh, people who were in his meeting. And policemen had to intervene by using gunshots and tear guns. Uh, you must know that during that incident, many people were injured, including one of Moise Katumbi's bodyguards. Can you tell us uh, who the perpetrators of the latest incident are? We still don't have much information on who were the actors of what happened yesterday. Because according to a communique from the governor of Congo Central Province, it was a group of members of a political party who was campaigning in the same area with Moise Katumbi without naming which political party is. But according to Moise Katumbi and his team, these people were members of UDPS and MLC, the political party of the President Chisekedi and the political party of Jean-Pierre Bemba, the Minister of Defense. Meanwhile, the election is next week. How does this incident impact the campaign of the other candidates? This incident has impacted negatively the campaign of opponents. As we know now, Moise Katumbi won't go anymore in Kasai provinces because these provinces are close to the current president and he thinks that it won't be a good idea for his security and also the security of people who will come on his rally. And it's not even an isolated case because because when the President Chisakedi was campaigning in Goma, a candidate at the provincial level in North Kivu was arrested because he was asking freedom to Salu Mukalonda, who is a proch collaborator of Moise Katumbi. Mbumere Lumumba was arrested and is still missing till now. That was reporter Jaffa al speaking with us from Goma, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The World Bank has approved debt relief for Somalia, and the IMF is expected to also approve the measure. This allows Somalia to have its debt forgiven by both the bilateral and multilateral creditors. The country's debt-to-GDP ratio will go down from $5.2 billion to around $600 million, according to the World Bank. The news comes as President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed is leading a large delegation in Washington, D.C. Somalia Finance Minister Bihi Ima Iga tells reporter Haroun Marouf of VOA Somali Service that his country welcomes the debt forgiveness. It is a huge milestone and we are really proud. Uh, the reform implementation that has been undertaken over the last 10 years. So to see that Somalia has reached the completion point, it entails a huge uh, achievement. At the same time, it's also a huge responsibility because Somalia has to stand on its feet, sustain on the reform gains that has been made over the years, and also enhance the domestic revenue mobilization so that we will be able to meet our domestic operations. But this is, has been a collective effort that has been contributed by the Somali people and the Somali government, as well as also our international partners. So partnership has been a critical uh, aspect in achieving this uh, success, but also it speaks to the commitment and the determination of the Somali people, particularly the leadership. Are you contemplating on taking new loans? 
as you know, you know, our debt carrying capacity is very low. Our domestic revenue is also low, despite huge efforts that has actually increased our domestic revenue by 25% for the last five months. But still, you know, our domestic revenue is very low in, if you compare to other African countries. And uh, when particularly if you look at the tax to GDP ratio, which is close to 3%, and the average in Africa is 15%. So <clears throat> with that uh, fact, we are not actually contemplating taking any new loans because that comes with huge responsibility when it comes to debt servicing. So we are actually striving to enhancing and strengthening our domestic revenue so that we will be able to meet our domestic operations and in the future, in the near future to also cover some of the development needs. Tell me exactly how much do you collect now? What is the domestic revenue, uh, the amount of money that you collect now? And how much uh, budgetary support or grants do you receive externally? And uh, if there are any shortcomings, how are you going to fill up the any budget gaps? How are you going to avoid? That's a very good question. Um, the domestic revenue, uh, if you look at our uh, 2024 uh, appropriation bill, the domestic revenue is close to, I think it's more than, it's close to 40%, 85% roughly. In real numbers, it is 345 million annually. And the kind of external support that we are anticipating in 2024 uh, mainly comes from two sources. The multilateral uh, donors, mainly the World Bank and the African Development Bank, which goes to mainly on, on capital investment, particularly in development projects, as well as also some uh, budget support that also comes from the, the bank, the World Bank. But we are also looking forward to receive some bilateral support from the Turkish government, as well as also from the European Union. Somali Finance Minister Bihi Ima Iga was speaking with reporter Harun Marouf of VOA Somali Service. On December 17th, more than 8 million Chadians will vote in a referendum on a new constitution according to the National Commission in charge of organizing the constitution referendum. But the ballot seems to be going in General Mahmoud Idris Debi Itino's favor from the outset, simply because the government has not respected the recommendation of the national dialogue to let the people choose the form of state, even if a fringe of the opposition advocates federalism, only one bill is proposed, that of the unitary state supported by the government. In Jamena, posters cover the walls in favor of a yes to a constitution for a unitary armed decentralized state, which is not very different from one of the military repealed in 2021, enshrining a regime in which the head of state concentrates most of the power. The yes side seems certain to win. The government is waging a high-powered campaign that is crushing the no campaign and is partly based on the rallying of supporters of Sasses Masla, an opponent who signed an agreement in principle with the military at the end of October. This alliance stands a good chance against a divided opposition that has been the target of violent repression for over a year. The referendum is the final step towards the elections promised by the junta, which has been in power since 2021. The two main platforms of parties hostile to the junta are calling for a boycott and are putting up stop the referendum posters with large red crosses where they can. They hope that a low turnout will delegitimize a general whom they accuse of perpetuating a 33-year Debbie dynasty. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.